get passionate about playing and hungry about winning, I'm going to get it done. So I'm here to excel at the highest level. Jalen Evander LeCue, born June 13th, 2000. Why is Jalen LeCue not in the NBA full time? In today's video, I'll give you three reasons why in my opinion he's not, but also celebrate one of the best dunkers today that they don't talk about enough. There's also a lesson to be learned here on how much it takes to actually get a job at a place every young athlete that shot a ball through a net wouldn't mind having a career at. It's not just about how well you shoot or play defense or how high you can jump that'll determine your fate. There's a thing called politics that go on inside and outside the game that really pushes a talent over the edge or not. Look at it like hurdles thrown in front of you along your journey that forces the cream to rise to the top. That means what high school did you go to and how you did there? Will you graduate with a GPA and score good enough to accept a scholarship from a school that can put enough eyes on you? Where'd you go to college? Depending on the level and again your performance on the floor and in the classroom, especially if you have to stay more than one year, determines where you go from there. You have to be just as good a student as you are an athlete to keep you on the floor, showing you have the maturity to survive amateur challenges to even be considered by the NBA. Then one of the biggest questions, were you healthy throughout that journey and where's your body now that it's time for real investments to be made into you physically? That's the typical route. But then there's prospects like today's feature that find loopholes allowing them to get through the door sooner or in a different way, but even then there's challenges to that too, beyond how talented a guy is. Jalen LeCue, since the first time I saw him play in high school, had what it took up to that point to have a great chance not just making the NBA, but being one of the most exciting talents seen in a while. Yes, there's been amazing dunkers at the point guard shooting guard position, but there's something about how this guy jumps and dunks that puts him in a lead category of any era in that regard, then forces you to ask the question, why isn't he in the NBA full time and one of the best young talents at 22 years old the league is excited about? He came into the NBA straight from prep school and was not taken in the 2019 draft but soon signed for four years by the Phoenix Suns, two years guaranteed. He played in just five games for the team in 2019-20, then four the next season after being traded to two teams in less than 10 days, ending up in Indiana. Most of his young pro career spent in the NBA G League. Here's what happened to Jalen LeCue since his bouncy high school days and three reasons he hasn't been able to carve out a full-time spot in the league. Salute to Sincerely Blacko on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Jalen LeCue is a listed 6'4 combo guard that moved around a lot as a child from Manhattan to the Bronx to Teaneck, New Jersey and back again for high school where he starred and was a borderline McDonald's All-American for Scanlon High. He reclassified from the 2018 class to 2019 and transferred to Christ School in North Carolina before spending his senior year at Brewster Academy in New Hampshire. Originally, he committed to following in Dennis Smith Jr.'s footsteps as far as bouncy guards at NC State, but decided against it because of eligibility issues due to him transferring so many high schools and also his older age because of his reclassification. Once again, more hurdles and decisions a prospect will face that are sometimes more important than talent. After realizing he'd be eligible for the NBA draft, because he was 19 and already one year removed from high school, he entered the draft and stayed, foregoing his college eligibility. He went undrafted mainly because of his inexperience and not enough done on the high school level. The Suns signed him to a four-year deal, but from there, resulting in just nine games over the next two years in the NBA. Stunt number one, not going to college.
Obviously, from hearing Jalen's story, your first question at this point is why didn't he just go to college for a year and give himself the chance to be a lottery pick or at least first rounder and sign a four-year guaranteed deal instead of the two he eventually got? To me, that's a fair question and I stand on the side that says that would have been a better option at the time and in hindsight. But I do understand him playing the right now game. LeCue was only a four-star recruit, ranked outside the top 40 in high school, so to me, he was never going to get drafted. Because of his insane combine testings athletically, he was probably given a promise to at least be signed should he go undrafted, and for him, that was enough. He could help his family right then instead of a year later where he could have ended up in the same position. But I don't think that's how it would have went. Going to NC State and staying healthy, no question he would have blossomed. His first season would have been the 2019-20 season, and by the end of that year, no one on NC State's roster averaged more than 13.3 points a game. Even though 4-star and ranked 44, LeCue was still one of the more talked about prospects and YouTube sensations which carries a lot of weight nowadays, so the ball would have most certainly be in his hands all year to do whatever he wanted. On the college level, there weren't a single player as athletic, mixed with explosive, mixed with the athletic moves he tried and completed in college basketball. For that, the hype would have been there from him constantly on SportsCenter and Instagram, which again, carries a lot of weight in these days. Him averaging 14 to 16 points a game at NC State, while also showing he could shoot a decent percentage and run a team from the point guard position at 6'2", 6'3", which I think he actually is, would have made him absolutely lottery in the 2020 NBA draft that wasn't that strong after Edwards and Ball. He may have for sure been taken before Kyra Lewis, a pretty much wasted 13th pick by New Orleans. Yes, he could have gotten hurt, but he also could have stayed healthy, developing more into a point guard and securing a better spot in the draft with the team truly invested in him being a part of their future. Not Phoenix trying him out for five games and he's out the league by nine. Stunt number two, still not a point guard. With the decision made and he turning out to be in a better situation than most undrafted players, LeCue going into his first season in the NBA, which was played mostly in the G League as expected, needed to show once and for all he could be more than just an explosive athlete that could run a team. With two years guaranteed to do so, he needed to get right to it. After all, this was one of the biggest question marks on his game coming out of prep school. In 33 games in 2019-20, he averaged nearly just as many turnovers as assists, 2.9 to 3.5, a turnover to assist ratio of 1.19, meaning to scouts looking to add him to an NBA fold, every turnover comes with every assist should they sign LeCue. Year 2 was pretty much the same, ending his guaranteed time under contract by the NBA, already traded twice, waived by the Pacers, and signing with Dallas for a summer league spot in 2021. One he wouldn't get before he was off to the G League again from 2022 to present. The 22-23 season to his credit was his best as a point guard, averaging 5.6 assists to 2.8 turnovers. Because it took him four seasons to get to average numbers, he hasn't been able to convince a team he could be the best asset at point guard going forward. Stunt number three, still not a good enough shooter. And lastly, what I think is hurting Jalen LeCue currently is him not being an adequate enough shooter for the times the game is in. Being a great dunker is cool, it's exciting, and it gets you lots of fans in places like social media. But over the years, being an elite shooter has transitioned to be much more valuable to an NBA team currently and its future. Just ask yourself when was the last time an elite athletic point guard won an NBA championship? In NBA history, I can't think of any. In the past 23 years, there's been zero. 
the champion has either been a smart, heady point guard like Avery Johnson, Tony Parker, Derek Fisher, Mario Chalmers, Jason Kidd, or a shooter that can knock down big shots like again Fisher, Lowry, Kyrie Irving, or Steph Curry. Athletic point guards like D. Rose, John Moran, Westbrook, John Wall are like running backs, exciting but short-lived and historically either won't be around to or good enough in other areas to win big. LeCue is one of those guys that exciting plays just aren't enough. He shot just 29% from 3 in 22-23, never over 30% in 4 years. In 9 NBA games, he hasn't hit one yet. There's a balance needed and Jalen's is tipped way toward just a dunker. All in all, LeCue is only 22-23 years old. Will he develop into more than just excitement? Yet to be seen, but while that's what's on the table, I guess we can just enjoy one of the best dunkers in the game today, even before his prime. Salute, much respect, hopefully he gets a consistent chance soon, but for these reasons, his growth is being stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.